Turning Point is brought to you by PC Wealth Management of Morgan Stanley Smith Barney and the law firm of Duffy & Duffy, protecting the victims of medical error. Our very special guest today is the legendary comedian, Pat Cooper. Thank you, Frank. Nice to be on. Why am I saying I'm not a legend, I'm a ledge. A ledge. I never made legend. <laughs> you know, when you're dead, you're a legend. But I only made ledge. Like it, like it or not, you're a legend. People. Thank like, when... you, but that's a nice compliment. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. You're certainly a Friars Club legend. That's, uh, it's one of the things that's synonymous with the Friars Club is Pat Cooper, Friars Club. You mean the Friars? I used to do the roasts on those things. Yeah. And... Um, I, it took me a while to realize that I was capable of uh, talking without a script. And uh, that's a special gift because you can't learn ad libbing like that. And when I went on the fries the first couple of times, they didn't want to put me on. They thought that was sin. I didn't have that ability because everybody came on with, with writers and everything. I went on and just talked off the top of my head. But the secret I found out is when you're coming to roast an individual, if everybody said the same thing that you were thinking, go to the next guy that's sitting next to him and make fun of that guy and then say to the guy that you're supposed to roast, I didn't like anyway, and you, and you work it out. And I've done 15 or 20 of them already. So, you know, all of a sudden they say, this guy's a genius. Not a genius. I'm gifted with that. But other than that, I have no complaints. 83 years old, and you got the nerve to want to interview me. What about the first time you went on stage? You remember? You know how many times people ask me that questions? I, I did weddings. I, uh, I'd get up in front of a bar and I would do impressions. And coming from an Italian family, they didn't understand that because there was no talent in my family. You know, there were the, the, this was an Italian years ago. Monday to Friday, you work. Saturday, you go shopping. Sunday's macaroni. Monday afternoon is lunch is leftovers. That's what you did. You got a check on a Friday. You went shopping Saturday. Today, nobody does that anymore because you can, you know, go on the iPod, iPod, U-Pod, and say, send me four steaks and give me some scouring powder, and uh, you're going to stay home and never leave anymore. And it leaves, it leaves an impression of boredom. Nobody does shopping. When your mother and father, my mother and father went shopping, it was an art. It was an art. We were going shopping, and uh, it was like uh, they were Cary Grant in a movie, and they knew how to shop, and they carried stuff that I couldn't carry. But you don't see that no more. Those, those were oil paintings, that kind of, that kind of, not only Italian people, all kinds of genders. They, uh, you don't see that no more. I got grandkids now, and they, uh, they go, who's Frank Sinatra? And I go, oh, brother. And I say, well, who do you like? And they name groups that I never heard of. And I said, well, uh, oh, that's when they got ripped the jeans. They buy jeans for $180 and they rip them. People go, well, you, you, you look good for 83. I'd rather be 40 and look old. And people say to me, well, you, know, you don't have a wrinkle. I, you know, it's, well, you. I said, if I pull my pants down, you'll see wrinkles like <laughs> you wouldn't believe. So, but that's okay. I was gifted there. My face is there. But I was married to a great lady. And uh, that's, that's, that's behind me. And I'm still here. I'm on your show, which is a nice honor. Are you online? Are you on Facebook or Twitter or any of that? I don't have a computer. You don't have a computer, for I, sure. Why? Why would I want a computer to listen to uh, the, the wives of Sarasota or the mothers of Torrente? I don't want to hear their business. What are you doing in my business, ladies? Why am I turning you on? Now, the Kim Kardashians, I'm saying to myself, why? Do people not see that this Kim Kardashian is jealous of herself and she's as scared to get old because she'll fall apart? I mean, these people making millions of dollars, it's eating them up. I don't see the happiness there. I don't see the greatness there. I don't see the talent there. It's a body. And I don't say this about all women, but most women today, it's property. My body is property. And let me explain what they say to you now. You want to open my envelope, you better have enough stamps. What, are you kidding me? 
That's what it's about. Everybody said, you know, again, the house shows are married from Jersey, Anna, and they're all dressed and they're all up, and they, they're in a business that they don't belong in. But evidently, there's, there's a market for people who want to know other people's business. Years ago, it was a shame. What do you watch on TV? Uh, I watch, well, sports. I like the mixed martial arts. I watch. I watch a good horse race or maybe a good boxing match. I like good movies. I watch the CNN. I want to know what's going on in the world. I look up. I look and uh, and, and 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 I see. I see a lot of weakness. Not that I'm genius, but I see weak. I don't see happiness. I mean, people with millions and millions of dollars are not happy. And those who have nothing, some you'll find happiness in some of those people. They have nothing, but they want to help you. Years ago, hello, Mary, egg. can we have a, a, a cup of sugar? Oh, now they go, we don't have sugar, now we don't. We have a new thing that you put it in, and it stirs itself, and we can't loan it to you. And there's no camaraderie. There's no backyards where you had backyards. You, I mean, today they got machinery there. You know, they go like kind of spit you, put the sausage on. It, there's no fun. There's no fun. But that's it. On that note, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to ask you about Jerry Seinfeld, a show you did a while ago now. We'll be back with Pat Cooper. That's his mom, I've for 30 years. Say something. That's his mom, i got Jewish friends and Italian friends coming for dinner. What am I going to cook? She says, lox, parmesan. Turning Point with Frank McKay is brought to you by Smith & DeGroat Real Estate, serving the tri-state area since 1955, and CAI Insurance Solutions since 1961. On the web at www.conferenceny.com. Today at Atlantic Honda, we decided to interview some real customers. They're family oriented, and I really like the spot. The price is fantastic. I wasn't even planning on getting a brand new car, and I wound up getting an 012. Lease a 2012 Civic LX for just $89 a month. Lease a 2012 Accord for just $139 a month. There's so much to choose from, it was hard, you know. Got 10 cars to them. Have a very good finance program. This surpasses anything we've ever experienced in other Honda dealerships. Visit AtlanticHonda.com. Hi, I'm Kevin Jonas. And I'm Danielle Jonas. And we chose to have our wedding at Ohika Castle because it's an amazing place where dreams can definitely come true. Ohika is a real-life castle built back in 1919 by Otto Herman Kahn. During the Roaring Twenties, he entertained famous celebrities such as Charlie Chaplin and Enrico Caruso. Lots of cool stuff happens at Ohika Castle, like weddings, bar and bat mitzvahs, sweet 16s, and historic mansion tours. And this is Ohika Castle in Huntington, New York. So we love it there and we cannot wait to go back. We were dealing with a mountain of credit card debt. We didn't know what to do. Being in debt is a nightmare. The constant phone calls, the stress, and the damage to your credit report. We felt trapped. That's when I heard about Credit Card of America. They're a nonprofit, licensed debt management company dedicated to getting people like us out of credit card debt. If you have over $2,000 in credit card debt and are at least 30 days behind on your payments, then Credit Card of America can help you. They have a wide variety of programs that stop the harassment and reduce your monthly payments by up to 50%. Call Credit Card of America right now and get free of all credit card debt like we did. I felt safe knowing that Credit Card of America is a not-for-profit company. We wanted a company that we could trust. And Credit Card of America has helped thousands of Americans get out of credit card debt. One phone call changed our financial future. And it can do the same for you. Late fees and interest are putting you further in debt at this very moment. Do the smart thing and call Credit Card of America right now. Don't wait. Call immediately. It's time for a new beginning. We're back with Pat Cooper, and he hasn't stopped sticking since he's been. Is that shtick? That's my do. habit, you know, sometimes, I'll give you an example. I've had people at the table say, you know what, you know, we like you, Pat, but you never give anybody a chance to talk. I said, I apologize. So I stopped. Nobody said nothing for five <laughs> minutes. So I said, I'm thinking, then they're looking, they start laughing. Because it's, I think it's my energy. And, uh, and I've done, listen, how many beatings I got from my mother for opening my mouth. Really? I mean, today they, they call that, uh, you know, your mother would got arrested. No, nobody would arrest my mother. She would turn up and beat up the cops, <laughs> you know. Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld. Now, <laughs> I'm sitting in the village. I had an apartment in the village. And I'm watching a television show. And the phone rings. Mr. Copey has... Uh, I'm from the Jerry Seinfeld show. I said, really? That's nice. And we'd like to have you on the show. I said, really? How about leave me alone as I bust on my chops? And I hang up the phone. 
And 10 minutes later, Mr. Cooper, we, we were told you're an idiot. <laughs> so I said, are you? They said, we'd love to have you on the show. Can you leave tomorrow morning? I says, yes. There'll be a ticket at the airport. You'll go to LA. There's a rent a car there. You'll drive to the place and you'll do the Jerry Seinfeld show. <clears throat> so I, I said to my wife, God love, I says, she goes, well, go. I went and I got there. And, and what's his name? Jerry says, Pat, we're fans of you, what you at Stern. I said, nobody like you on Stern show. I said, well, that's very nice. Thank you. And they were very nice. I met Larry David. And uh, I said, OK, where's my script? And Larry David said, no, we, we, this is what we want you to do. I said, OK. You know, it's about a jacket. I said, fine. And you're angry. You got to get that jacket back. And I said, fine. So I turned around and uh, <laughs> I'm walking. I said, Jerry, where's the jacket? And he goes, well, you know, uh, the, the gypsies. What gypsies? I said, now it's the gypsies. Where's the jacket? And then Jason Alexander goes, excuse me. He's telling, excuse me, you in show business. Eh? Why am I talking to you for? <laughs> and that's what they wanted, you know. The same with Robert De Niro movie. I didn't ask for that. Analyze that. And analyze, analyze this and that. Ah. So am I crazy? And I said, Bobby, I wanted you to tell you, you know, I don't, I don't do many movies. You're lucky I took this part. You know, and I'm trying to break things down. They're looking at me. You hear me, Bobby? You know, I'm a name. I want to see some billing there. I ain't got no time for nonsense. I don't need this. And he, he didn't know what to laugh. He didn't know. But see, my overbearing, I think I started to frighten him because. You know, everybody's going over oh, Mr. De Niro, I mean, I'm, not me. I'm, he didn't get your humor. He didn't understand. Oh, he got my humor. He got my humor because he understood that we're all here. I, I, I mean, I look up to you, what you did, fine, you're rapping. But I wanted to break it down because I'm going to be in this, I'm going to do scenes with him. And I wanted to try to make a friend. And I was great in those scenes. And he would drink black coffee every two, two, three minutes. I go, stay awake, will you, Bobby? Do me a favor, stay awake. And then I did something I think that might have annoyed them. The bartender, he's got no lines. I said, Mr. Cooper, can I get one line here? Then I go, I'll, I can join the union. I says, uh, OK, here's what you do. When I'm, when, when I'm talking to Bobby, interrupt him and say, Mr. You know, what's his name? Vito. Vito, you want a drink? So. He says, you think? I says, listen to me. I'll back you up. Don't worry about it. So this guy turns around and goes, and De Niro's talking to me. Well, I don't want to do this thing no more. And all this guy goes, excuse me, Vito, you want a drink? And it threw. It threw. It went, huh? Uh, 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 I said, Bob, have a drink, Vito. Have a drink. And they says, cut. And I said, look, the guy one needs one line for crying out loud. And Bobby's looking at me like, who is this guy? <laughs> And I said to my wife, I'll never work with him again. I made him a bundle of nerves. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of those great, well, he's going to talk about some of those great moments. We're going to talk about Howard Stern. We're going to talk about Jackie Gleason. Whatever we'll you want to talk right about. right after this. Pat Cooper. Hey, Jerry, what the hell went wrong? What's the matter with you? What are you, a kleptomaniac or what? I forgot to take it off. You forgot to take it off? Oh, you go into a department store, you put a suit on, and you walk right out. What are you, some sort of an idiot? I'm sorry. Where's the jacket? Well, one of the gypsies took it. Oh, the gypsies took it. Of course, New York has a lot of gypsies. You want to be blocked as a gypsy. Well, it's, it's true, I saw it. Excuse me, are you an entertainer? Are you in show business? No, I, uh, I... Then what am I talking to you for? Turning Point with Frank McKay is brought to you by Atlanta Honda, New York's auto giant, and Herman Katz, Ken Jimmy and Klein, property tax attorneys and advisors. <laughs> Today at Atlantic Honda, we decided to interview some real customers. They're family oriented, and I really like the spot. The price is fantastic. I wasn't even planning on getting a brand new car, and I went up getting an 012. Lease a 2012 Civic LX for just $89 a month. Lease a 2012 Accord for just $139 a month. There's so much to choose from, it was hard, you know. Got 10 cars to them. Have a very good finance program. This surpasses anything we've ever experienced in other Honda dealerships. Visit AtlanticHonda.com. Hi, I'm Kevin Jonas. And I'm Danielle Jonas. And we chose to have our wedding at Ohika Castle because it's an amazing place where dreams can definitely come true. Ohika is a real-life castle built back in 1919 by Otto Herman Kahn. During the Roaring Twenties, he entertained famous celebrities such as Charlie Chaplin and Enrico Caruso. Lots of cool stuff happens at Ohika Castle, like weddings, bar and bat mitzvahs, sweet 16s, and historic mansion tours. 
And this is Ohika Castle in Huntington, New York. So we love it there and we cannot wait to go back. Why spend more than you have to on your life insurance? Did you know that term life insurance rates have fallen more than 60% in the past 15 years? I'm Byron Udell, founder of AccuQuote. At AccuQuote, we monitor the rates, features, and financial strength of hundreds of top-rated life insurance products from brand names you trust. Since 1986, we've helped hundreds of thousands of people just like you save a fortune on their life insurance. For example, a healthy 40-year-old can protect his family with a half million dollars of 10-year level term for less than $21 a month. We also have policies that guarantee your money back even if you don't die. So whether this is your first time buying life insurance or you want to see if you're paying too much, call today for your free quote. Call 877-489-9639. That's 877-489-9639. And we are back with Pat Cooper. And I'm going to ask you this all in one question, because I might not get another opportunity. I'm sorry. <laughs> Howard Stern and Jackie Gleason. Tell me about both well, of these guys. Well, a man called Willie Weber saw me in a small club. And I wasn't even making $20, $30 a show. And he come over to me, so I'm Willie Webby, he says, I manage Jackie Gleason, I married this one, I married, I manage that one, I married. I'm going, yeah, 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 Mr. Webber, yeah. I was laying brick at that day, daytime, and that night, yeah, we're going to do two shows. And then um, he says, you listen to me, he says, son, you got what it takes. I says, oh, my God, I got to hear this guy. <clears throat> he said, I'll get you on Gleason within a year. I said, yeah, very nice, thank you. He looked at me, he says, I'm telling you, you got it, kid, if you listen to me, you need direction. I listened to him eight months later. I'm on Jackie Gleason. And, to, you know, I was working part-time because I was estranged from my first wife. And I was working in a diner with hot dogs and stuff like that. And the guy who brought us the bread picked me up with his truck. And I had the tuxedo on, and we taped on a Tuesday. Now, get this. I'm backstage, and Jackie comes out of the elevator. I mean, bigger than life. And he walks right over to me like he knew me for 50 years. He goes, Pat, if you weren't on my show, he said, you couldn't be on my show. But you know why you're on my show? He said, no, Mr. Gleason, because you're great. And I, I says, and I said, Ch but I was like this. And that was shown on a Saturday. Next day, Willie Weber, you're going into the Copa, you're going to Vegas, you're going to Reno. I said, on a Sunday? says, that's how good you were last night. So this man gave me an opportunity, and I'll never forget him as long as I live. Howard Stern, I get a call, <clears throat> excuse me, from Howard Stern. I don't know who Howard Stern is. At that time, he was working some local stuff with his, uh, he had a, a radio show. And I said, okay, and I went on. And, uh, you know, I'm hearing him, uh, some of the things he's saying about people and everything, and... And uh, I jumped in, and I would, but I never kissed his butt. If I had something to say about him, I would say it. Now, he says to me, uh, it's up to you. Your mother's on the phone, and your daughter. You don't want to talk to them. I said, put them on. That's wrong. Put them on. First of all, I want to know why they want to talk to me. But this is, I says, well, this is a, 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 an exposed show, and my mother got on. And my mother kept putting me down, and I didn't say, and fine. And my daughter put me down. And they had reasons, but not, not, not the reasons that they, they thought. I didn't ask them for nothing. I left. I didn't run away and hide. I went up, I, I took an eight, $8 room, and I started to work. I had to support my kids. Fine. I was in court every other day. I, they should have made me a, a series, Pat Cooper in court. Whatever I was told by the court, I did. And naturally, the anger. And it's 50 years later, they're still angry at me. I mean, I said to my mother, if I owed you money, why didn't you call me? You had a call on Howard Stern. I said, but you know what shocked you? I told him to put you on. Now, Howard is a bully. I knew it, and Howard knew that I knew he's a bully. All of a sudden, now, he goes to Sirius Radio, see? And he's now uh, a giant, big giant. 
Karmazian, whatever the name of Kemp, he loves him and everything. Karmazian, no, yeah, Karmazian. Yeah. And I'm watching him and I'm saying, this guy's starting to talk about people who died. Of, you know, and I'm listening to myself, this is no good. And I said, I'm going to have to go after this guy, which I did. I says, now, ladies and gentlemen, he's on Sirius Radio. He got a divorce, which is and it's normal, I said. And he wants you to know he's not Howard Stern of yesteryear. I said, Howard, if you're listening, if you're born a dog, you can't die a cat. You ought to be ashamed of yourself that some of the things that you said to people, now you want them to say, I forgive you. I said, and when you got to explain to your kids who you are, I said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Now it's the money. Now he's in the Hamptons. So he's trying to transition his whole life that he was never that Howard Stern. And I try to remind him, you are what you are. Let's talk about your book. Uh -huh. New book. I'm sure you're very, very controversial in there. You're saying, speaking your mind, I can't imagine you sugarcoating well, anything. Where's the things that people want to hear about you? Angels they don't want to hear about. Because everybody thinks of an angel. They don't want to hear about angels. What did you do that you know is stupid? That's what I put in the book. I did this. I made this mistake. I did it. Would you do it again? Faster. But you know something? My ex-wife got married. God bless her. I got married to a wonderful lady. I was married over 40 years to this woman. I, I, I met a nice, I, I, I become a better person. And then I became successful. And all I can say to people is, she's, why me? Wow. And I think of the people, the teachers that told my father, these are light. This guy lights up the world. What are you aggravating him for? Well, hey, why come I get an electric bill? So I forgive them? No. I don't even think of that. They are in their own box. Five days a week, Saturday shopping, Sunday macaroni. Nothing wrong with that. I was beyond, I, I couldn't see that. I couldn't see that. So what happened? I wind up on television and this is the story. When we come back, in the final few minutes with Pat Cooper. <laughs> Turning Point is brought to you by PC Wealth Management of Morgan Stanley Smith Barney and the law firm of Duffy & Duffy, protecting the victims of medical error. Hi, I'm Kevin Jonas. And I'm Danielle Jonas. And we chose to have our wedding at Ohika Castle because it's an amazing place where dreams can definitely come true. Ohika is a real-life castle built back in 1919 by Otto Herman Kahn. During the Roaring Twenties, we entertained famous celebrities such as Charlie Chaplin and Enrico Caruso. Lots of cool stuff happens at Ohika Castle, like weddings, bar and bat mitzvahs, sweet 16s, and historic mansion tours. And this is Ohika Castle in Huntington, New York. So we love it there, and we cannot wait to go back. Today at Atlanta Condo, we decided to interview some real customers. They're family oriented, and I really like the spot. The price is fantastic. I wasn't even planning on getting a brand new car, and I wound up getting an old 12. Lease a 2012 Civic LX for just $89 a month. Lease a 2012 Accord for just $139 a month. There's so much to choose from. It was hard, you know. Got 10 cars to them. Have a very good finance program. This surpasses anything we've ever experienced in other Honda dealerships. Visit AtlantaConda.com. Attention, oxygen therapy users, for this important message. I lost my freedom the day I went on oxygen. Those tanks, they kept me from really enjoying my life. Hi, I'm Mary, an oxygen expert here at Inogen. If you require supplemental oxygen, we can help you regain your freedom and independence. Meet the new Inogen One. It's a lightweight and easy-to-use portable oxygen concentrator that makes its own oxygen. It works just like your in-home concentrator, but it's much smaller and lighter. Take your independence back and do the things you love without worrying about running out of oxygen. The Inogen One is even approved for air travel. I first got this Inogen One, I thought, this is a this is a godsend. This is a real real piece of art. Call now and we'll send you this free information kit. If you have Medicare or other insurance, you may be eligible to reclaim your freedom with the Inogen One at little or no additional cost. Call 1-866-880-4355 for your free no obligation information kit. Call 1-866-880-4355 today. We are back. We are back with Pat Cooper, the incomparable Pat Cooper. 
what do you do from here? You've done everything in the world. You've had a career for so many years. I am a healthy man. And a couple of weeks ago, I went to my uh, hearing doctor, another genius, and I told him I heard my heart pounding in my ear. And he went, oh, my God, he says, I don't like that. I says, I didn't ask you to like it, but I, you know, I never heard that before. He says, you better go to a heart specialist. And he scared me. I'm in Florida. I don't even know heart specialist. I go to emergency. And I said, excuse me, but in my heart. And he goes, your heart? Next thing I know, I'm in bed. They're doing an EKG, ABC, whatever the hell they're doing. I'm going, well, see, I'm trying to explain to them. I got it in my ear. I'm hearing it hot. Make a long story short, I'm in the hospital 24 hours. They're waking me up every hour to give me this, that, and I'm on IV, UV, he's V. I'm standing like an idiot. I'm going, what am I doing here? Finally, the two doctors come out and ask me, Mr. Cooper, what are you doing here? Where is your pain? I said, I didn't say I got any pain. I said, I'm hearing my heart in here, but why did you go to your regular doctor? I said, my specialist told me to go see a heart specialist. I don't know any heart specialist. And they looked at me and he said, let me tell you the good thing. We examine you from head to toe. He says, you're a healthy specimen. I says, well, that's nice, but I'm so sorry. I'm using somebody's bed. They said, I never heard it of you getting, he says, that could happen to anybody. I said, well, this guy, doctor, why is he sending me to the to, to heart specialist? And I said, you know, the good thing is I got a clean pass. So I'm healthy. And I always look forward to the next step. The next step is when you get up, you say, well, I guess I'm going to last this day because I've done it all. I can't do any more. If they offer me a series now, I, I don't want it. I don't want to do no more movies. I don't want to do nothing. I just like to turn around, have a little fun with my friends, see my grandkids, and that's it. Clubs, and that's clubs or uh, restaurants, what, what do you do? What do you perform? I perform in Westbury, I mean, I, but now I'm going to Jersey, I'm going to work the Count Basie Theater again. I work that once a year. I still bring in 10, 1,200 people, but when my people are gone, I'll be gone with them. And then still to be asked to come on and do these shows, Frank, you know, I don't take this lightly. I don't take this lightly. And if they don't buy my book, I'm not going to get angry. They're missing something. It's a good, good book. Never got one bad writing. Not one bad writing. Pat Cooper, How Dare You Say How Dare Me is the book. Thank you. And it is terrific. It's supposed to be top notch. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. And you're great and thrilled to have you here. Thank you very much for being My here. Pleasure. And thank you all for being here. Thank we'll you. see you next week on Turning Point. Thank you, Bobby. Very good. Pleasure. When I first what? Got involved with the Friars Club. Uh, Pat has a hearing aid in there, by the way. No, I have a hearing problem. You have a hearing problem. A hearing aid, I have. Yeah. Everybody wants to have their own show. They got their own cameras. I mean, uh, I'm afraid to go to the bathroom. There's not going to be a camera in somebody's house. But even the dogs are celebrities. Even uh, the cats are celebrities. Don't feed the dog this. He's got to get this. He's got to get stiff. My father says he like what he eat. We like it this. He's going to like it that. You don't like it? Die. Today, that's called child abuse. Civic LX for just $89 a month. Lease a 2012 Accord for just $139 a month. There's so much to choose from. It was hard, you know. Got 10 cars to them. Have a very good finance program. This surpasses anything we've ever experienced in other Honda dealerships. Visit AtlanticHonda.com. Hi, I'm Kevin Jonas. And I'm Danielle Jonas. And we chose to have our wedding at Ohika Castle because it's an amazing place where dreams can definitely come true. Ohika is a real-life castle built back in 1919 by Otto Herman Kahn. During the Roaring Twenties, he entertained famous celebrities such as Charlie Chaplin and Enrico Caruso. Lots of cool stuff happens at Ohika Castle, like weddings, bar and bat mitzvahs, sweet 16, and historic mansion tours. And this is Ohika Castle in Huntington, New York. So we love it there and we cannot wait to go back. We were dealing with a mountain of credit card debt. And we didn't know what to do. Being in debt is a nightmare. The constant phone calls, the stress, and the damage to your credit report. We felt trapped. That's when I heard about Credit Guard of America. They're a nonprofit licensed debt management company dedicated to getting people like us out of credit card debt. If you have over $2,000 in credit card debt and are at least 30 days behind on your payments, then Credit Guard of America can help you. They have a wide variety of programs that stop the harassment and reduce your monthly payments by up to 50%. Call Credit Guard of America right now and get free of all credit card debt like we did. I felt safe knowing that Credit Guard of America is a not-for-profit company. We wanted a company that we could trust. 
And Credit Card of America has helped thousands of Americans get out of credit card debt. One phone call changed our financial future, and it can do the same for you. Late fees and interest are putting you further in debt at this very moment. Do the smart thing and call Credit Card of America right now. Don't wait. Call immediately. It's time for a new beginning. We're back with Pat Cooper, and he hasn't stopped sticking since he's been. Is that shtick? That's my you. habit. You know, sometimes I'll give you an example. I've had people at the table say, you know what? You know, we like you, Pat, but you never give anybody a chance to talk. I said, I apologize. So I stopped. Nobody said nothing for five <laughs> minutes. So I said, I'm thinking, then they're looking, they start laughing. Because it's, I think it's my energy. And, uh, and I've done, listen, how many beatings I got from my mother for opening my mouth? Really? I mean, today they, they call that, uh, you know, your mother would got arrested. No, nobody would arrest. See the talent there? It's a body. And I don't say this about all women. But most women today, it's property. My body is property. And let me explain what they say to you now. You want to open my envelope, you better have enough stamps. What, are you kidding me? That's what it's about. Everybody said, you know, again, the house show shows are married from Jersey, Anna, and they're all dressed and they're all up, and they, they're in a business that they don't belong in. But evidently, there's, there's a market for people who want to know other people's business. Years ago, it was a shame. What do you watch on TV? Uh, I watch, well, sports. I like the mixed martial arts. I watch I watch a good horse race or maybe a good boxing match. I like good movies. I watch the CNN. I want to know what's going on in the world. I look up I look and uh, and, and 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 I see I see a lot of weakness. Not that I'm genius, but I see weak I don't see happiness. I mean people with millions and millions of dollars are not happy. And those who have nothing some you'll find happiness in some of those people. They have nothing, but they want to help you. Years ago, hello, Mary, uh, can we have a, a, a cup of sugar? Oh, now they go, we don't have sugar, now we don't. We have a new thing that you put it in, and it stirs itself, and we can't loan it to you. And there's no camaraderie. There's no backyards where you had backyards. You, I mean, today they got machinery there. You know, they go like kind of spit you, put the sausage on. It, there's no fun. There's no fun. But that's it. On that note, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to ask you about Jerry Seinfeld. A show you did a while ago now. We'll be back with Pat Cooper. That's his mom, I know for 30 years. Say something. That's his mom, I got Jewish friends and Italian friends coming for dinner. What am I gonna cook? She says, Lox, Parmesan. <laughs> Turning Point with Frank McKay is brought to you by Smith & DeGroat Real Estate, serving the tri-state area since 1955, and CAI Insurance Solutions since 1961. On the web at www.conferenceny.com. Today at Atlantic Honda, we decided to interview some real customers. Family-oriented, and I really like the spot. The price is fantastic. I wasn't even planning on getting a brand-new car, and I wound up getting a Go 12. Lisa 2012. Turning Point is brought to you by PC Wealth Management of Morgan Stanley Smith Barney and the law firm of Duffy & Duffy, protecting the victims of medical error. special guest today is the legendary comedian Pat Cooper. Thank you, Frank. Nice to be on. Why am I saying I'm not a legend, I'm a ledge. A ledge. I never made legend. <laughs> you know, when you're dead, you're a legend. But I only made ledge. Like it, like it or not, you're a legend. People. Uh, Thank when... you, but that's a nice compliment. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> you're certainly a Friars Club legend. That's uh, it's one of the things that's synonymous with the Friars Club is Pat Cooper, Friars Club. You mean the Friars? I used to do the roasts on those things. Yeah. And... Um, I, it took me a while to realize that I was capable of uh, talking without a script. And uh, that's a special gift because you can't learn ad-libbing like that. And when I went on the fries the first couple of times, 
They didn't want to put me on. They thought that was sin. I didn't have that ability because everybody came on with, with writers and everything. I went on and just talked off the top of my head. But the secret I found out is when you're coming to roast an individual, if everybody said the same thing that you were thinking, go to the next guy that's sitting next to him and make fun of that guy and then say to the guy that you're supposed to roast, I didn't like anyway, and you, and you work it out. And I've done 15 or 20 of them already. So, you know, all of a sudden I say, this guy's a genius. Not a genius. I'm gifted with that. But other than that, I have no complaints, 83 years old, and you got the nerve to want to interview me. What about the first time you went on stage? You remember? You know how many times people ask me that question to my mother? She would turn up beat up the cops, <laughs> you know. Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld. Now, <laughs> I'm sitting in the village. I had an apartment in the village, and I'm watching a television show, and the phone rings. Mr. Cooper, yes. Uh, I'm from the Jerry Seinfeld show. I said, really? That's nice. And we'd like to have you on the show. I said, really? How about leave me alone as I bust on my chops? And I hang up the phone. And 10 minutes later, Mr. Cooper, we, we were told you're an idiot. <laughs> so I said, are you? They said, we'd love to have you on the show. Can you leave tomorrow morning? I said, yes. There'll be a ticket at the airport. You'll go to L.A., there's a rent-a-car there, you'll drive to the place, and you'll do the Jerry Seinfeld show. <clears throat> so I, I said to my wife, God love, I says, she goes, well, go. I went, and I got there, and, and what's his name? Jerry says, Pat, we're fans of you, with you at Stern. He said, nobody like you on Stern show. I said, well, that's very nice, thank you. And they were very nice. I met Larry David, and... Uh, I said, okay, where's my script? And Larry David said, no, we, we, this is what we want you to do. I said, okay. You know, it's about a jacket. I yeah. said, fine. And you're angry, you gotta get that jacket back. And I said, fine. So I turned around and uh, <laughs> I'm walking, I said, Jerry, where's the jacket? And he goes, well, you know, uh, the, the gypsies. What gypsies? I said, now it's the gypsies. Where's the jacket? And then Jason Alexander goes, excuse me. He's telling, excuse me, you in show business? Eh? Why am I talking to you for? <laughs> and that's what they wanted, you know. The same with Robert De Niro movie. I didn't ask for that. Analyze them. that. And analyze, analyze this and that. Uh. So am I crazy? And I said, Bobby, I want to get to, you know, I don't, I don't do many movies. You're lucky I took this part. You know, and I'm trying to break things down. They're looking at me. She hit me, Bobby. You know, I'm a name. I want to see some billing there. I ain't got no time for nonsense. I don't need this. I don't. And he, he didn't know what to laugh. He didn't know. But see, my overbearing, I think I started to frighten him because, you know, everybody's going to oh, homes. I, I did weddings. I, uh, I'd get up in front of a bar and I would do impressions. And becoming from an Italian family, they didn't understand that because there was no talent in my family. You know, there were the, the, this was in Italian years ago. Monday to Friday, you work. Saturday, you go shopping. Sunday's macaroni. Monday afternoon is lunch is leftovers. That's what you did. You got a check on a Friday, you went shopping Saturday. Today, nobody does that anymore because you can, play, you know, get on the iPod, iPod, e U-Pod, and say, send me four steaks and give me some scouring powder, and uh, you're going to stay home and never leave anymore. And it leaves, it leaves an impression of boredom. Nobody does shopping. When your mother and father, my mother and father went shopping, it was an art. It was an art. We were going shopping, and uh, it was like uh, they were Cary Grant in a movie, and they knew how to shop, and they carried stuff that I couldn't carry. But you don't see that no more. That's, those were oil paintings, that kind of, that kind of, not only Italian people, all kinds of genders. They, uh, you don't see that no more. I got grandkids now, and they, uh, they go, who's Frank Sinatra? And I go, oh, brother. And I say, well, who do you like? And they named groups that I never heard of. And I said, well, uh, oh, that's when they got ripped the jeans. They buy jeans for $180 and they rip them. People go, well, you, you, you look good for 83. I'd rather be 40 and look old. And people say to me, well, you, know, you don't have a wrinkle. I, you know, it's, well, you. I said, if I pull my pants down, you'll see wrinkles like <laughs> you wouldn't believe. So, but that's okay. I was gifted there, my face is there, but I was married to a great lady. And uh, that's, that's, that's behind me. And I'm still here. I'm on your show, which is a nice honor. Are you online? Are you on Facebook or Twitter or any of that? 
I don't have a computer. You don't have a computer, for I, sure. Why? Why would I want a computer to listen to uh, the, the wives of Sarasota or the mothers of Torrente? And I want to hear their business. What are you doing in my business, ladies? Why am I turning you on? Now, the Kim Kardashians, I'm saying to myself, why? Do people not see that this Kim Kardashian is jealous of herself and she's as scared to get old because she'll fall apart? I mean, these people making millions of dollars, it's eating them up. I don't see the happiness there. I don't see the greatness there. I don't